Hello and welcome to this App Hopper screencast. My name is Michael. Today we'll be demonstrating how to configure Microsoft Entity Framework uh, with automatic migrations. Uh, so this is a screencast, but we also have a blog post describing the exact same topic. So if you prefer, you prefer that, you can just go there and, and read the blog post. We've also published all the source code online. It's on GitHub and you can see the repository URL here. Um, but let's get started. So I have Visual Studio and I'm going to create our core model project. It's going to be a class library, which we'll call core and we'll call the solution uh, code first also migrations. Uh, so first order of business is to remove the silly class that Visual Studio has. And then we'll add a model folder to hold our model classes. Um, we're going to do an abstract base class called entity. Um, which will just have an ID property for it's a framework to use to keep track of, uh, of objects in the, um, that, that, that are stored in the database. Then we'll add our only real um, model class, which is going to be called user, and which will have a, uh, a name property to start with. Uh, with that done, we can start configuring our code first persistence which we'll stick in a folder called persistence. Um, we just need our context. Uh, we just need to install uh, NC, the NC framework NuGet package. Um, which will give us the DB context uh, class that we can uh, inherit from. Once we add the correct namespace, and this class will just have a DB set of users, um, the user class we created previously. We just need to get that namespace also. And that's it for our. Uh, code first uh, NC framework model uh, configuration. So now we can go ahead and create a web project uh, which will uh, use our model. And we're going to be using Phil Hack's really empty MVC3 template, which will give us a nice and clean project. Uh, we'll add our home controller and clean that up. Uh, and then we need to install the NC framework NuGet package um, we just add a reference to the core project and then install the NC framework NuGet package. We'll grab the, the one with the SQL Server Compact because we'll use SQL Server Compact for development purposes when we're uh, debugging on our uh, local machine. The controller holds uh, a context which it can use to uh, store and fetch uh, entities in the database. And our index view will just return uh, all the users currently in the, in the context. And we also need our action to create users. Um, and that'll just uh, get a user and uh, stick it uh, into the context. Save any changes. And redirect back to the index view. And that's it for our home controller. Um, so now we can add a view. Oh, we just need to return like so. So now we can add a view. Um, we'll add a home folder for the index home view. And remember that the model is going to be a list of users. And we'll just uh, print those out in a list. And then we need a form for the create action. And the form has two input fields, uh, a text field and a button. Like 
like so. So now the web project is all ready. We just need to configure uh, the connection string. Um, so we're going to set the web as web project as a startup project, and we'll add a app data folder to hold the um, SQL Server Compact Edition data file. And then I'm I'm just going to copy paste the connection string, um, but basically specify as a data directory as a place to store the data file, and we'll be using the SQL Server Compact Edition uh, provider. Um, and let's uh, fire that up and see how that works. So we'll hit F F5, and then we just have to wait for the project to build. I'm just gonna take a few seconds. And let's see if we can add anything. Yeah, it seems to be working. We can now add users to our SQL Server Compact Edition database. Um, so that's a really simple Institute Framework Code First setup with our associated web project. Now just try and add a new property to our user entity. It's, it's going to be an email address, and we just need to add the relevant stuff to the view also. So we'll print out the email address uh, next to the name, and we also add a uh, text box to um, specify the email address for the users we're creating. Um, so let's just see how that works. Oh, we need to compile. Okay, we get a, an error from Entity Formwork uh, suggest, suggesting that we need to use um, migrations. Um, so let's get that going. Uh, let's just let's just check to see what the current state of the database is. Um, so we have a users table, and there's just one uh, name column uh, in there. So so the problem is that we're we're missing a, an email address uh, column for the user table. Uh, so we just need to add a, a configuration class to our code first uh, call project. So we'll clean that up, and this inherits. Uh, a DB migrations class. I'm just copy pasting that. And then we need to uh, add a constructor where we specify what sort of uh, migration configuration we want. So we're enabling automatic migrations and we're also enabling uh, data loss uh, allowed, which means that and see when we will drop columns uh, from the database if we uh, if we remove them from our model entities. And our context needs to overwrite uh, the on model creating method. Like so. And actually, that's that's all the configuration we need to to uh, configure NC framework to do automatic migrations. So let's see how that works. Just refresh. There's now an email address field also, and it works. Um, so let's just see what happened to the database. Yeah, that's now an email address column, which was automatically added by NCG Framework. Um, so that's all it takes. We now we have now a complete web project with associated um, core model project, um, which does automatic migrations. Um, let's try to deploy this to App Harbor. Uh, so we'll just add a transformation which changes the changes the core project from using. A SQL Server Compact Edition to using uh, a proper SQL Server, uh, which is going to be running on App Harbor. So we'll go to App Harbor and create a new application. And we'll then install the SQL Server add-on. We just use the free edition for this test. And then we just need to go to the SQL Server add-on and specify the name of the uh, connection st string that we want overwritten. It's, gonna, it's called context in this case. And then we need to set up Git to push to App Harbor. So I have a git ignore file that I'm copying into the folder. And I just need to add the packages folder to the git ignore file. So we're going to be using 
uh, NuGet package restore. So we don't need to push the app packages folder to App Harbor. It's going to save us some time. So enable NuGet package restore. Now App Harbor will automatically download any um, missing NuGet packages. Initialize the repository. Add everything and do our first initial commit. Let's just see that. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, it just made a typo here, um, so we just need to figure out what's going on. There we go. So now the code is pushed to App Harbor, and App Harbor will start building the project. Let's go see the status of the build. And there we are. The code is all built on App Harbor. Let's go check out the application to see if it's deployed correctly. Because this is a new app, we just need for, to wait for the load balancer to, uh, up, to be updated. The application is now running on App Harbor, and we can add data to the database. Note that the schema was automatically set up, and any updates you make to the model uh, going forward, like adding properties or new entities, uh, it's going to get automatically added to the database, on, both on your local machine and on App Harbor. So that's it for this screencast. Thanks for watching.